Running Away from the Hero. Remake. Evade the Hero and Flee. 215 Number 27. Other Stories, 4 Number 4 Their Circumstances, The Circumstance of the Evil Disciple 3. As I became an evil disciple, or what humans called the Demon King, I knew several things. I was not subordinate to the evil god and only needed to absorb the divine parts to become stronger. I spent my powers doing so. I was an enemy of the world, and the only thing I could do was show my anger to the world before someone killed me. I would try my best to complete myself, and I found that most parts were gathered in one place. I went there to see my teacher there. I was honestly surprised, which was a feat in itself as I had lost most of my feelings except for anger. He really was evil incarnate. However, I was even more surprised that he could not use any divine parts. Even evil had refused him. It gave me confidence that I could beat him, but that was also arrogance. When I was human, he told me to fight to win instead of running away. He had always fought to the end, and I thought he had been looking for a chance. However, things went wrong when I felt the divine parts run away from me. Even though he could not use magic, his speed was unbelievable. While I killed the demon running up to me, I was growing anxious. I could not let him get away, but I failed to catch him. Number 5 Their Circumstances, The Circumstance of Hawel Rain Die I felt spears, swords, and magic attack me. Their intent to kill was pure murder, and I sighed. How dare you speak that way to your professor? I grabbed my weapon as I was in the academy instead of the battlefield. Go study. Historical. Class was over, and it was time for their own studies. You don't let us. I heard a student cry and had to agree. The academy did not let students study easily, and interfered, as true studying here meant trying to escape from here despite me. Their seniors had been the weird ones who had done so without motivation. You demon. Stop talking. Why can't I beat that evil one? I became stronger to survive. I swung my wooden bat to keep the students in line and confirmed that they were down. You did well. Iris came up to me with a smile. Professor Iris, you too. Rain, you're too conservative in calling me by my title. I could not smile at the lady as I felt another professor's glare at me. Iris's smile grew cold as she spoke. Be aware that you're a professor here. You're coming between us, lovers? Since when had Rain become your boyfriend? The two glared at me, and I felt actually terrified. Only a few could dare speak to Iris, but the other one was also as formidable. Is it me or Layla? Is it me or Iris? Layla was also the daughter of a powerful aristocrat in the Empire and an accomplished mage in the Tower. The important thing was that she had also been my former customer. Don't we have more important things to do? The corridor was filled with unconscious students, and I thought it was not good for professors to show this kind of behavior here. They would leave after waking up anyway, and I thought it was better. No, there isn't. I agree. I see. I had to shut my mouth at their adamant answers. This occurred probably three times a day, but I still could not adjust. This became my daily routine when noble young ladies found out I worked here through their social circles. The good thing was that the princess had sole control of who worked in the academy and had agreed to not hire any more young ladies after Layla when Iris requested so. My organization's club had rules, but this was a free-for-all. Even though I was a swordmaster, I was unsure whether I could protect my chastity if the ladies worked together. The empire was a scary place. Lady Iris, Lady Layla. A member of the night squad, who was normally of no help, had come to save me when I had to watch the two ladies glaring at one another. What is it, Sir Bivel? There had been an urgent order for all those working here to come back. Something seemed to come up from his seriousness, and I thought he might have found my instructor. I desperately wanted to continue working here, but the two ladies now bickered over who would go with me. I found myself being dragged to the meeting place. We have to save the world by defeating the evil demon king. I suddenly heard that we had to save the world. The girl who was saying so with an impassive face was Mirua. She had grabbed our graduates and was running the Ask Kidnappers, which was one of the most powerful groups of fighters around here. The Demon King is aiming for Sir Ast. I could not believe that now even the Demon King was going after my instructor. While I felt sorry, they were not concerned about his safety. How about going after Sir Ast after he is attacked by the Demon King? 
if he's connected with the evil god, he may be useful. Even though the demon king had at a time taken half of our lands, they were only thinking of how to use him. He is a good bait, as Sir Ast is now in our lands. If we beat the demon king and block the path to the demon world, we will achieve our goal. While people shouted at Miru's words, I felt like something would go wrong, but there was nothing I could do about it. Number 6 Other Circumstances, Student Circumstances Therefore, the school will rest until the demon king is conquered. A long silence ensued before the students reacted. One cried while another pinched her cheek. It was real. That was when the shouts came. Bless the evil god. This hell is finally over. They were joyful at the prospect of a short vacation. Running away from the hero. Remake. Evade the hero and flee. 216 Number 27. A princess's memory, 23 I prepared many things to celebrate Sir Ast's accomplishments when I heard he would return. I was a member of the imperial family and his direct superior, but it was also due to wartime. I was the only one with any free time and had been able to meet Ast first. Who is that? An elf. I can see that. A high elf, actually. Why did you bring her? I don't know. Ast and I looked at the elf sticking close to him. We both thought, how could such a being be an elf, but I stopped. Prince. My name is Lelia. I could see that she was only pouting, but I was more concerned with the first word. Prince? Ast looked away from my words. When did you become one? I don't know. The elf seemed to call him a prince out of her own will. Wait. I looked at Ast in astonishment, and he uncharacteristically looked away from me. That was a huge shock. What? Historical. Did the elf think of him as her prince on a white horse? How can she think? Ast is my prince on a white horse. Ah. I was at a loss for words. Ast? Yes, your majesty. While Ast could not look at me, he answered. Explain. I could not fathom what had happened. A high elf was the royal blood and priestess of elves and protected the world tree, a gift from the goddess who had protected the world from the evil god. She was a fairy tale to humans, and elves could not meet one easily. I could see that Ast had gone through an ordeal as he hesitated before speaking. A carriage from one of our allied countries passed us on the way. Right. I inspected it. What? The story was already strange. The carriage looked suspicious to me. What was he saying? He knew he could not touch a carriage from an allied country without evidence, as it would be a diplomatic fiasco. Asked. Yes. Tell me the real reason. He looked away from me. You wanted to create a scene that would nullify your accomplishments, right? Ass was sweating, which meant I was right. You rescued a high elf, so congratulations. I could see that he had done so, which was the logical conclusion and the solution. It did not matter if the carriage was real, as kidnapping a high elf meant that anyone who believed in the goddess was their enemy. Viscount asked. Ask gasped. This accomplishment, along with others, would easily make him a viscount. Look at your speed up the aristocrat ladder. It's unprecedented. I was not lying even as I was making fun of him. I had not seen anyone go this quickly. Thank you, your majesty. Seeing Ast shake was a sight, as he knew he needed to accept the title. So, Viscount asked. Yes, your majesty. What are you going to do with her? I had not heard of a high elf coming out in the human world, which made this difficult. I heard the Ministry of Foreign Affairs contacted a nearby elf village. That's fast. She's a high elf. We ignored her antics, like asking Ast to call her name and such. Only Rhea seemed nervous. Your Majesty, she is a royal blood of. It's all right. I was certain that the High Elf was not your normal being. No one would attack the World Tree despite the war, which meant she had come out according to her free will. Someone who calls Aster Prince needs to be treated accordingly. Ah. Rhea seemed to understand, and I spoke to Ast. Asked, what room should I give her? A flower bed? Can't you break her away? She's a princess among elves. You're the perfect escort. The high elf's eyes shone. You understand me. I was not happy even though she was certainly praising me. 
asked, so please take care of her until we receive an answer from the elves. You, your majesty? Ass looked desperate, and while I would have granted his wish after teasing him more, it would not work this time. Go on. He was enough alone. With a high elf in tow, it was best to let him take responsibility. I could not believe I thought that yesterday. Your Majesty. I clenched my teeth after getting a report from my maid to the palace flower beds. It's true. I had not believed the maid's report and would not have come it if Ast had not been involved. My head turned white on seeing the high elf sleeping among the flower beds. She had been placed here. Rhea. Yes, Your Majesty. How should we call this situation? Madness? I clenched my teeth again. There would have been witnesses, and the elf delegation would know of this when coming here. They would think I had placed a high elf in the flower beds. If this was intentional, Ast was a criminal mastermind. If unintentional, I would have to erase him soon in the future. Where is Ast? I shook off the headache and searched for Ast. Would he have slept in his room after leaving a high elf like this? The scariest part was that it seemed probable. I do not think he is nearby. Find him at once. Right. Rhea spread the world, and I saw Ast a short while later. Where have you been? I had gone to work to your rooms. Did you sleep in your own room? My lips were shaking as I spoke. Of course. Ast seemed completely indifferent, and I was at a loss for words. He had really unintentionally done this. Why is she sleeping here? I pointed at the high elf, who was still fast asleep. You said to give her a flower bed. Asked. Do you know who a high elf is? Aren't they priestess and the royal blood of the elves? They're considered half-gods among elves and are seen as protectors of the world tree. I felt faint at Ast telling me the definition of the elves. He was truly crazy. Rhea, kill him. I also felt that removing him from this world was the right thing to do. Running away from the hero, remake. Evade the hero and flee. 217 A Princess's Memory 24 Unfortunately, I failed to remove Ast, as he was quick on his feet. He somehow managed to run around like the palace was his own home, which reminded me that he had been a thief. Where are you, Sir Ast? Ray gave up after a week of chasing after him. I cannot do this alone. I consoled Ray as she shook. It's all right, Ray. You would have caught him if this wasn't the palace. I told her to kill Ast, but he was an aristocrat, which meant I could not kill him with only my word. Also, one could not attack another human being easily here, which was a handicap for Ray. I would have cornered him into a one-on-one. -on -one. Ray's reddened. Eyes finally reminded me I had something more important to do, Your Majesty. I saw Ask come out from the doors of my office. Let's stop the chase. I give up. A war was going on. And the Empire also supported other allied countries. Also, we had quite a few battles with Merdea, and an all-out war was looming. That meant people would not have seen Ast and Ray's chase as something doable. So today, work as usual. Yes, Your Majesty. Ast now came into the room and stood near me. As usual, as if nothing had happened, he did stand a few steps away from Ray. She was not staring at Ast with fiery eyes, Sir Ast. Yes, Sir Ray, can't you take one hit from me? I refuse. While conversations like this happened, things were not bad until she came. Prince, Your Majesty, may I run away? She is an honored guest, so try to be patient. The high elf came in with teary eyes. As she usually had chased after Ast and Ray. However, what was going on? I usually had soldiers protecting my room and maids who attended to visitors. They had standing orders to speak to me who had come and ask whether the visitor could come in. Even Ray had to follow this practice and had done so this morning. Anything. Wrong, your majesty. Had I answered unconsciously when talking with Ray, Ast now looked at me as he expertly blocked the elf from jumping towards him. How could this elf come in without my guards or maids speaking to me first? Even if this elf was a royal among her race, having her come in without anyone notifying me meant consequences. However, Ast answered me lightly, that is because I had them go away beforehand. What? What nonsense was he saying? You will know that.
So Ray ambushed me yesterday. That was close. Ray said, Lexi really regretted it. I know that. Ray had been waiting by the door to ambush us when he came in yesterday morning. You didn't. I stared at Ast with shaking eyes. Yes, I thought Sir Ray may be waiting for me if the maids announced my coming in, so I came secretly after sending them away. Ast seemed almost proud of himself. And I had to stop myself from ordering Ray to attack him. What had he done? What? Reason did you give them to do so? I told him we were going to proceed on a secret mission wartime makes such excuses work. Did he say excuses? They would not have believed you. My maids were young noblewomen who had been educated and trained specially to become my maids. My guards could have become soldiers in other lands. They would not have gone away without asking me. I told them the chases were a smokescreen for the secret mission. Also, I showed them your letter. What? I vacantly stared at the document as showed me. This man is undergoing a special mission, so follow his words like they are mine. What is this? The document was in my writing. And my seal was pressed onto it. I never wrote. This, of course, I forged this one. Prince, what amazing things you do. My head turned white at listening to the two of them. He really was crazy. Asked, hand that paper over. I ripped a letter into shreds. He really was too. Dangerous to let loose. Remember, if something like this happens again, I made a motion of slicing my neck and asked nodded, Your Majesty, are you in? I heard a voice that did not belong to anyone directly under me. The elf delegation is here, right? I finally could take care of that nuisance of an elf. That fact made my headache lessen, but I won't go. Where would I go without my prince? The ache came back again as I saw the elf lying on the floor in front of the delegation. He is only my butler and not a prince. I explained quickly, lest they really thought of him as a prince. Is that so? I told them how that high elf came to call asked her prince. And I had to sigh at the same elf rolling around the floor. While I would have made a formal complaint, I could not say anything as the elves were more embarrassed than I was. Asked, catch her and make sure that she goes back. I... Historical, do you want to talk about the punishment for forging my signature? I will do so immediately. I sighed as I saw As do what I asked and breathe easier only when she went away with the elves, who were grateful and humiliated, Prince. We will meet again soon. Yes, yes, she was. Finally going away. And I watched As make sure the princess did not return, Ray. Yes, your majesty. I think my patience is increasing in leaps and bounds these days. Maybe I will become a saint one day. It was true that I was more lenient with Ast than anyone else because he amused me. I kept him near to observe him. That is why Ast is acting out like that and I need to train him. How? Ast was an aristocrat. And I could think of one way that I could act around that. Fact, he can go to the army. Had I answered unconsciously when talking with Rhea? As now looked at me as he expertly blocked the elf from jumping towards him. How could this elf come in without my guards or maids speaking to me first? Even if this elf was a royal among her race, having her come in without anyone notifying me meant consequences. However, As answered me lightly. That is because I had them go away beforehand. What? What nonsense was he saying? You will know that Sir Rhea ambushed me yesterday. That was close. Rhea sighed like she really regretted it. I know that. Rhea had been waiting by the door to ambush Ast when he came in yesterday morning. You didn't. I stared at Ast with shaking eyes. Yes, I thought Sir Rhea may be waiting for me if the maids announced my coming in, so I came secretly after sending them away. Ast seemed almost proud of himself, and I had to stop myself from ordering Rhea to attack him. What had he done slash? What reason did you give them to do so? I told him we were going to proceed on a secret mission. Wartime makes such excuses work. Did he say excuses? They would not have believed you. My maids were young noblewomen who had been educated and trained specially to become my maids. My guards could have become soldiers in other lands. They would not have gone away without asking me. I told them the chases were a smokescreen for the secret mission. Also, I showed them your letter. What? 
I vacantly stared at the document Ast showed me. This man is undergoing a special mission, so follow his words like they are mine. What is this? The document was in my writing, and my seal was pressed onto it. I never wrote this. Of course, I forged this one. Prince, what amazing things you do. My head turned white at listening to the two of them. He really was crazy. Asked, hand that paper over. I ripped the letter into shreds. He really was too dangerous to let loose. Remember, if something like this happens again. I made a motion of slicing my neck and asked nodded. Your Majesty, are you in? I heard a voice that did not belong to anyone directly under me. The elf delegation is here. Right. I finally could take care of that nuisance of an elf. That fact made my headache lessen. But. I won't go. Where would I go without my prince? The ache came back again as I saw the elf lying on the floor in front of the delegation. He is only my butler and not a prince. I explained quickly, lest they really thought of him as a prince. Is that so? I told them how that high elf came to call asked her prince, and I had to sigh at the same elf rolling around the floor. While I would have made a formal complaint, I could not say anything as the elves were more embarrassed than I was. Asked, catch her and make sure that she goes back. I? Historical. Do you want to talk about the punishment for forging my signature? I will do so immediately. I sighed as I saw Ast do what I asked and breathed easier only when she went away with the elves, who were grateful and humiliated. Prince. We will meet again soon. Yes, yes. She was finally going away, and I watched Ast make sure the princess did not return. Rhea. Yes, your majesty. I think my patience is increasing in leaps and bounds these days. Maybe I will become a saint one day. It was true that I was more lenient with Ass than anyone else because he amused me. I kept him near to observe him. That is why Ast is acting out like that, and I need to train him. How? Ass was an aristocrat, and I could think of one way that I could act around that fact. He can go to the army. Running away from the hero. Remake. Evade the hero and flee. 218 of Princess's memory, 25 what was she saying? I'm going to be enlisted in the army? I have a lot of troops under me. Who knows what will happen during the war? It's best to prepare for the future. I agreed with that sentiment but also suspected something was afoot. She would not send me to the army just because of preparations, which meant I may suffer in the future. I see. However, it was not a good move to show that I knew something more was going on. She may try another plan, and it was better for me to prepare against what I already knew. Yes. Therefore, we're going to train troops directly under me. Just the word army brought back bitter memories from the past. Even though each and every Korean man had their own stories about the army, mine were quite disastrous. Your Majesty, do we really need to do this? Yes. However, I had no other choice but to obey this princess. When will the organization take me back so I can become an instructor? I would so go there now. Rhea and asked, you two are close to me. If I lead an army, you two will have to follow my orders and lead my troops. No, I would have to run. I heard that commanders were killed first in battle and did not want to become a target. Historical. So, I will divide the troops between you two. Then, you will train them for three months, and there will be a test. I expected this but expected other conditions from this princess. However, just doing so is not fun. The loser will be given a special punishment by me. I sighed as Her Majesty smiled like she was enjoying herself. Your Majesty, were we doing something serious? What's this about punishment? Why, asked. Do you think you're going to lose? While she attacked my pride, I knew my life was worth more. Yes, I think I will lose. Asked. Sir asked. Her Majesty and even Rhea looked at me with saddened eyes. I am only a butler and not a knight. I am at a disadvantage, you're a knight, you know. Aren't those who will be an example to knights become honorary knights? The title should be removed. I was more than confident of ruining how knights were viewed. Your Majesty. Rhea looked at the princess nervously as she valued a knight's honor. Unfortunately, I cannot choose it out of my own will. Is that so? 
I knew it was a lie. While aristocrats raised their voices in normal countries, the emperor ruled supreme here. Howling had tried to influence the imperial family politically through aristocrats, but they had been unable to sway him. However, Her Majesty right here could make the emperor what she wanted, and she had probably given me knighthood in the same manner. I advise you to follow my words, as you are both knights. Rhea would have cried over such words, but they sent me to the army. However, I soon discovered something seriously wrong with the game she had set up. Number 36 Other Circumstances, An Officer's Circumstance While I did not consider myself a good officer, I was expecting to be assigned under the eldest princess's command, who his majesty favored the most. I arrived with my family's pride and dreams and fell into, hell. What is this? I felt absolute fear. Other members of the imperial family set up proxies even at a young age, as raking up victories would act favorably when fighting for the throne in the future. I had heard those who were low-ranked rested in castles in countries they had gone to assist. Only the youngest and the eldest princes stayed in the imperial castle, and I had heard many rumors floating about the reason why. She was unable to go. Even as a new officer, I knew what I saw. Liquor tastes good in the morning. Let him sleep. I saw soldiers drinking during the day, and most slept on the ground. I saw gambling, and no one looked at me despite my officer uniform. It was natural, as no one was a soldier here. I could see that they could not be called soldiers and that they would be disastrous on the field. This was. Hell. What? Someone said what I had been thinking. A man with black hair was looking at me. While we were similar in height, I could see that he had trained for a long time, and the three medals on his chest told me he had achieved greatness on the battlefield. While I would normally think that he was an experienced officer, he was admitting that he did not want to be here. I am Officer Adaru, assigned here today. I saluted him since he seemed my senior. He looked at me with sympathy, and I could not help but agree. I am asked, butler to Her Majesty. I am also responsible for this troop. Sir asked. I heard his unprecedented speed up the noble ranks and knew his name was famous in the army. It was said that no one in the army had opposed Sir asked receiving his title. Maybe I still had a chance after all. I heard your reputation during training and am honored to work under you. It was not flattery. People were either jealous or respectful, and I was the latter. One did not go up the ladder without noise unless he was the real deal. Is that so? Sir Ass nodded indifferently as I stared at him with respect. Then, we have something important to do. I knew what he was referring to, as a war was not fought alone. We needed soldiers, but here all of them were mere drunken men. The first thing to do was make them into soldiers, which would be possible with Sir Ast. Then, begin. What? I said, begin. Sir Ast did not show himself for a while and no one listened to me for a month. I had given up when he appeared again with a wooden stick. Running away from the hero. Remake. Evade the hero and flee. 219 A Princess's Memory, 26 Number 37 Other Circumstances, A Villain Circumstance. After seeing the weaklings, I immediately went to Rhea, and I could barely suppress a curse. Sir asked? What are you doing here? Rhea approached me quickly to see how my temper was rising, even though she seemed surprised to see me on the day we were supposed to meet our troops. Are they yours? I could only watch Ray's troops training and knew immediately that they were elite soldiers. She would be unable to make them elites within the hour it took me to get here by horseback. Do you know the standard of my troops? Rhea shook her head. Aren't they similar to mine? I would not have come here if they were even adequate. However, mine drank on duty. Will you come with me? Rhea looked at me with suspicious eyes, but did so after a few words with her sergeants. I will go now. She ran using magic, and I could not catch a sword master doing so. At least I knew she was not in league with this situation, which meant only one person was left. Your Highness. What is it? The princess did not even try to hide her smile. I believe you're aware of the reason. I can't read minds. However, her eyes told me a different story. Is that it? Yes. That one word meant I had to make the best of her trick. I sighed, and the princess glared at me for a moment before speaking again. The elf sent you a gift. A gift? 
you did save one of their nobles. She asked her maid to bring the present, and two soldiers carefully brought a large box. Is it heavy? No one knows, but I heard it was something rare and should be carefully treated. How can your highness not know? Since the elf you saved sent it, it's possible. The present seemed foreboding. At least I would not get cursed since I am immune to curses. While Her Majesty also seemed askance, she asked me to open the present. While there would normally be a complicated procedure for a member of the imperial family to open a present, a high elf sent it. I opened the box and narrowed my eyes. What is this? Historical I saw that it was a thick tree branch from an old tree and had a surprisingly divine aura. What is that? Her Highness said the same thing as she stood up to see the box. It is still fresh. I think it was cut a short while ago. Is it a special tree from the elf's forest? The tree will be something if the branch is this impressive. I think it would sell well as furniture. I agree. The branches sent conned one's senses. That may have been why I opened the letter despite knowing who had sent this box. Let's see, Prince, I'm sending a branch of the world tree you said you needed. What? Her Majesty turned cold as her small hand rubbed the branch. A branch of the world tree. It does feel alive. I could not reply to her words as I vacantly read the letter. What does it say? That she and I are destined to meet again, and that she will. Stop saying such nonsense. I went back in the letter as Her Majesty's voice turned to ice cold. I send the branch, which I picked from the world tree, I did it myself. While it was a difficult job, you wanted it. It was thrilling to smuggle this, shall I read more? Not necessary. Her Highness looked like an old woman in her eighties as she sighed wearily. It was like she thought about what she had to go through such ordeals like this. Asked. Did you want the world tree so badly an elf would send a branch? It was a joke. Don't think I said it seriously. I did not ask for a branch in the first place. The world tree was what the goddess left behind to protect the enslaved elves due to human greed. The tree was said to have been planted by the goddess and was the legacy she had left with most of her power. Elves would take a seed from it and wait for it to grow before building a village. To think an elf would pick a branch off, even wooden canes used only by high-class elves were made of naturally fallen branches. Asked? I could see she was asking me what I was going to do with only her eyes. I. I had only said it in jest because I needed a special ingredient for the plan I was hatching. I had only been preparing for my next position as an instructor, as my first job had been filled with many difficulties. I needed to prepare for a situation where words would not make a difference and for instructees who would not listen. That was when I thought of a bat that would not harm them but teach them a lesson and keep them from harming themselves and me. One of my teachers back when I was in Korea had effectively used it on me, and while using it on mere students was bad, to people who may harm others if not kept in line, it was a project worth preparing for, and I acted as such. Before I came to the palace, I had requested a bat to the dwarves. A weapon that would not kill had struck a chord with one of the dwarf clans, and they began to try. However, they failed multiple times despite the huge amounts of money that had gone in. The dwarves told me that normal metal would not work, and there was not enough money to buy special metal. I tried some mithril I had smuggled, but the effort still failed. That was when I had mentioned the world tree branch filled with divine power, but I did not think she would actually. Asked. It seemed she was preparing to send me to the elves, and I opened my mouth. Your Highness, a crime doesn't exist unless it is discovered.